What's up, volleyball fans? I'm Darren Tipton, and welcome to the VB Adrenaline Podcast. Our podcast, we will dive deep into the heart of the game, bringing you the hottest topics, prospects, and a buzz surrounding prep and college volleyball, especially the world of recruiting. In each episode, our crew will spotlight rising stars who are shaking up the national game. Plus, we will serve you the scoop on current events that have coaches and fans talking courtside. Tune in for the episodes that spotlight tomorrow's college stars, new trends in the sport, plus interviews that will keep you informed on the explosion that is volleyball in the USA. You can connect with us on social media, Instagram at vbadrenaline.com underscore and Twitter at vbadrenaline. Be part of the conversation. Share your thoughts on your favorite players, prospects, and predictions by using hashtag VBAdrenaline. So grab a seat, volleyball fans, and get ready to dive into the world of spikes, sets, and serves with the VB Adrenaline Podcast. See you there. Hey, everybody. We appreciate you listening, tuning in as, as we talk to recruits, prospects, and people in the business of volleyball all over the country. And today, I'm lucky to be joined by Lincoln from Lincoln. Lincoln Arneal, he is everything Nebraska volleyball. This guy follows Big Ten volleyball, Nebraska volleyball in an amazing fashion. I listen to your stuff all the time. I read your stuff. He is breaking news in Nebraska and in Big Ten. So, Lincoln, uh, thanks for taking time today. You bet. Glad to be here, Darren, and glad to join the show. Yeah, well, you're probably catching your breath a little bit after what's been a whirlwind <laughs> uh, few months. Quite the year in Nebraska oh, yeah. for volleyball, starting, well, with their South America tour way back in July. Oh, yeah. yeah, it felt like, I mean, the year was really broken up into segments from February to, like, the end of August, the stadium match felt like one, one season. Once we got past that, okay, get through the non-conference. Okay, get through the Big, Ten, the Big Ten season. And then the tournament. So it felt like all these big hurdles to get through and kind of survive and look, look forward to as well, too. So it, it was definitely a long year, and, but it was a fun ride. I'm gl glad to be a part of it, glad to cover it, and glad to be part of the Nebraska volleyball ecosystem. Yeah, and then the way volleyball is now, those coaches take about 12 hours off, and now yeah. you go back into the transfer portal and get ready to recruit again. It starts all over and crazy, and which we will get more into now. But I want you to start, for people that just don't know, talk about empire that is Nebraska volleyball. Talk about what it means to Nebraska. It is not hey, I'm just going to college to play. It's something a lot bigger than anybody realizes. Talk about that. Yeah. I mean, it's a full-time job, too, just to play volleyball in Nebraska, too. I mean, it starts when they are getting looked at, kind of being scouted. We talked to Jalen Reyes earlier this fall, too, and he's looking at 2027, 2028s are starting to come on the radar, too. So even from a young age, there it's a process to get there. And then once you, they make their commitments, a lot of them do during their junior year. You, you're part of the family, too. I mean, they show up at volleyball matches just to watch or on an uh, unofficial visit. Fans recognize who these players are. I mean, we got two, two recruits coming in, coming in next year, and Skylar Pierce and Olivia Mock. I mean, they're many celebrities within the Nebraska volleyball world. Fans will approach them, get their autographs, or say, hey, I— Hey, Skylar, I saw that you broke the uh, career blocks record at Olathe Northwest. Congratulations. I mean, they know what's going on in their world. So it really starts then. And then once you're they're here, it continues on. I mean, they are celebrities within the town of Lincoln and the state of Nebraska, too. I remember hearing an interview with Bergen Riley where she was just out in downtown Lincoln getting some ice cream, too. And these people recognize them. And I don't know, they did want to take a selfie with them, too. So it's really cool kind of how the community embraces them. I don't know. It's not malicious, but it's, they're just, they're fans of the sport and fans of the players. And they would want to see them succeed, want to see them do well. And they're there to support them. And it starts, I mean, from the time they're recruits to when they're here players and just kind of the building of the program as well, too. Yeah. And I think social media, I mean, you, well, we talk about your job with Husker, you know, Husker Illustrated. I told you before we started recruiting, one of the reasons I started doing what we're doing is there, there aren't recruiting, you know, in-depth volleyball specific sites for colleges where college fans 
follow. Well, of course, Nebraska volleyball has that with Husker Illustrated because you yeah. do everything that college football does. It, it It is a religion, if you will, in Nebraska. For sure, yeah. I, I mean, going to their Dream Team camp, people want to know who are sh- who's showing up to that, who's making uh, official visits, who's on campus. So I think there is that the knowledge, the thirst for knowledge for what's going on in the recruiting world too. What's Who's the next great player? coming through the pipeline and because Nebraska is recruiting some of the best volleyball players in the nation from the prep ranks that kind of generates excitement too when you especially when you see a handful of them all playing on those junior national teams winning world championships too I think that generates a lot of excitement too and that's something that a lot of them can really rally behind too because they're not just rooting for Nebraska they're rooting for the country as well too to do well so that, it's really enjoyable and it's a fun part of the process well and with that you move on with that passion and with all that pomp and circumstance that comes with it, you know, and with them year in, year out, recruiting all of the top players in the country, Mm -hmm. something we've talked about. And I have wondered, I've asked Skylar about this a few times, comes with a pretty jam packed roster, right? And let's move into now, you know, there's going to be transfers with that, but the competition in that program, just look at their outside hitter room or their libero DS room, how deep those are. And all of them were alphas in their club. What's that dynamic like? Nebraska talked about that earlier this season too, especially with this current class of freshmen, how they really changed the dynamic of the practice gym too. And, and Becca Alec even said this later in the year too, that she wants them to come in and push them. She doesn't want to see, look at the depth chart and say, oh, there's a couple of juniors or upperclassmen that have are slated to start at this position. They should just hand over and just learn the role and buy their time. Like, no, they want those incoming freshmen or incoming players to really push them and raise the bar. And I think that's what you saw from Nebraska's class too. But you, you look at the kind of the, the depth chart of that outside hitter room, I and mean, there were four outside hitters, I mean, just left pin hitters were in the program this year and Allie Batenhorst, Lindsey Krause, Harper Murray, and Hayden Kubik. I mean, Hayden Kubik was a top 20 recruit and she's buried at fourth on that. She has a load of talent, could be a star anywhere. And that maybe that's one reason why she hit the uh, transfer portal this week too, because I mean, she is not getting an opportunity to show how really good she is. And she's a very talented player and the limited action that Nebraska fans have seen her. So it, it, it's tough at times too, but it's also... I think Nebraska takes that approach too, because you don't know how a lot of the players will kind of translate to the college level too. So there's a little bit of mystery work too. So they rather have a couple players and all of a sudden you get Harper Murray at the college level and, oh, she's one of the best outside hitters in the country, regardless of age too. So you strike gold like that too. And you hope for that for every single player too, but you don't know how that will translate or how they handle the college game jumping from the club and high school levels. Well, and I think this class is set probably, I mean, they probably didn't do well for, you know, those coaches that are building programs and the developmental because all the prospects now see that and they're like, well, Harper Murray jumped in Nebraska and played as a freshman. I'll do the same thing. Bergen <laughs> Riley took over, et cetera. And even at Nebraska, there's kids that just need to develop. And, and that's the hard thing. You can tell a kid all you want. Hey, you're going to compete. Right. But I don't think until they get there and then they have to sit for the first time that it's hard. It's that's a difficult process. And then especially when you see other your classmates playing right away, you know, difficult concept for some of these recruits to handle. Yeah. And and that's where you feel for a player like Caroline Juravicious, who was, again, one of the top players, too. They asked her to redshirt because she's behind Merritt Beeson, who is one of the leading candidates for national player of the year, too. I mean, no fault. I mean, Caroline could be a top. 15 outside hit or opposite hitter in the country too, but she stuck behind a player who is slightly better than her. And she had stuff to learn about her freshman year too, and kind of acclimate to that too. But it, it's exciting to see when it starts to click for him. I mean, Andy Jackson wasn't one of the more highly touted players when Nebraska recruited her and she committed, but she really blew up. And I think the other key part of this too, is a lot of the players are getting time with the junior national team too. I mean, save as much as you will for club tournaments and kind of competing on that level too. But when you bring all of the top prospects to kind of be in the same gym and see what other elite prospects are doing, that pushes them to not be content with dominating whatever local competition they may have, 
but it, they realize that there's a higher bar out there that they can meet too. So I think that has really played a lot into the development of these players to be ready when they come in as freshmen is that working with that junior national team. I mean, you look at that under 19 team that a handful of Nebraska, I mean, Bergen Riley did a great job learning there. Harper Murray was on that program too. Lanny Troboy as well too. So there's a lot of these players that get to know each other and set that standard working with that junior national team that kind of helped them prepare for the college game. And I tell everybody, that's why we're on our way. We're recording this right after, right before Christmas, but we're heading out to NTDP and mm -hmm. to cover it. And then we're going to go to the Under Armour All-American All game because I love watching a gym where it's best versus best. And yeah. they, you either step up or you step back in situations like that, but you really find out where you're at. And I think coaches do as well. So that's a great point when they play in that, not only do they see where their game is, I, I still, I've told the story 200 times, <laughs> but what makes Bergen Riley special was the first time she got invited to NTDP or whatever it was called. Then she came back and, we we're all like, oh my God, you got to go to Team USA. And what was that like? And she's like, yeah, the experience was cool. But I was in a gym where I was not the best. And I love that because now I know what I have to do oh, yeah. to be the best. And that's yeah. her mentality. I think this freshman class at Nebraska, sophomores now, uh, quite a few of them have that mentality, don't they? That I am going to do whatever it takes to be the best. For sure. Yeah, and, and and I mentioned too, I mean, they changed the gym and they came in and they really competed for that role too. And you look at what they did, they made it very difficult to keep them off the court too. I mean, Andy Jackson is, I think, my favorite example of that too. I mean, she was kind of, there was a three-player pool between Becca Alec, Maggie Mendelson, and Andy Jackson. But Andy Jackson was just so athletic and so quick and so powerful too. It was like, how can you keep her off the court? So she really kind of pushed and improved her blocking, figured out how to do a slide attack, which she had never done at the high school level, wow. and really kind of developed and, pu and pushed herself. So she inserted herself in the conversation and made the coaches make a decision that we're going to ride with her. There, there'll be some mistakes, some errors along the way, but the ceiling that she has is so high that it's tough to keep her off the court. Yeah. And I think it talks about, we talked about Jerevicious and, you know, the transfers, they they get their chance now. The nice thing about the portal, you know, you say what you want. Now they get their opportunity to go somewhere and prove that they are very good players. And, and you got to have that. There are more talented. There's more talent than ever before. There's more girls playing at a high level coming in ready to play early. And there's other programs that would gladly take them and they're going to get their opportunity. But, you know, they are like a mini, a mini all-American team if you look at Nebraska's roster. Yeah, there's some elite talent. I mean, this is the work that assistant coach Jalen Race has done of stacking those like a number one class, a number two class, a number one class, all kind of consecutively too. And then all of a sudden, oh, you have no seniors, but you have so much talent on the roster that it's really tough to ignore. And it really kind of puts Nebraska in the position where they were. They were playing for a national title, like I said, with no seniors on the roster. We didn't even have this on the list, but talk about the coaching staff with adding, I mean, their little addition this year, you know, Jalen, Kelly, just go down the line and talk about yeah. all the knowledge on John's bench. Yeah. And you forgot the biggest name on the list too. I mean, you add a third assistant coach too. Who's Nebraska going to bring in? Oh, Jordan Larson, one of the best volleyball players in the entire world. So I, I, we talked to the players too, and they appreciated having her there just kind of, because that was the one spot where Nebraska didn't have that playing expertise was outside hitter and being a pin hitter. And Jordan, just having her in the gym and talking about simple things like attacking or even just pass and serve, receive, that really made a difference to them. And just kind of the little things that she could do, uh, picking up that just watching her play, because she's still trying to play in the Olympics next summer as well, too. So she's still in playing shape and can do great things. So she's a great addition to the Nebraska gym. Uh, Kelly Hunter, three-time All-American, two-time national yeah. champion. She's really impressive. And hey, she's young in her coaching era. But uh, she's really impressive to talk to. And I've talked to her just a little bit about like the setter development, what they did last year, what they did with Bergen Riley this year and the development and what they're trying to do offensively. And uh, she knows the game. John Cook has always talked to her about getting the coaching and she just has, she has the mind for it and, and the demeanor as well too. And is exciting to her. And then Jalen is just a ball of energy that never stops. And he loves coaching defense. He loves figuring out how to 
slow down opponents. And also he loves the recruiting side of things too. So John Cook's really built a great staff that complements what he likes to do so he can think big picture. But also he really, John Cook also really empowers the assistant coaches too. I think that was a big change from 10, 12 years ago too. Of He, he wants them to kind of develop who they are and hopefully one day go take over his program. He has a pretty pretty extensive coaching tree out, out in the world too. And I think he takes a great pride in that of just coach, being a coach's coach and kind of helping set them up, up for success as well too. Yeah, whenever that happens and he decides, well, let's do a two-hour podcast and let's break down the potential candidates to take over the successor. That would be a great conversation someday. I've got a, I've got a long list in my head because they never know. So I'm, John <laughs> Cook may decide he's had enough. He's going to go live that cowboy life in his, his dream world. I, so I've got a list in my head of, and it's changed a little bit over the last year, a couple of years, but I've, I've got a good list that I need to actually be ready when and whenever that announcement does happen. Yeah, he literally will ride that horse off into the sunset someday. Just dream. <laughs> I, know. I know. I wish it's been interesting getting to know and follow the program. Let's talk about the press conference after the national championship game and a lot of conversations mm-hmm. been had about that. What were your thoughts, first of all, on the athletes, not only the three that were on the main stage, but in the background, and let's just talk about, I, I yeah. thought, I mean, it did, it brought tears to my eyes a little bit because it was so real. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I, I first off, I mean, I credit to the players too, who probably had the most gut wrenching loss. I mean, they got handed tech, Texas dominated them in a way they had not seen all year too. I mean, yes, they lost to Wisconsin, but that was a little bit closer than Texas just Took them behind the woodshed, but credit to Nebraska is I think every player who played in the match, um, except for maybe a servant specialist or didn't play, but everyone who played extensively came out and spoke to the media too. So I mean, I give credit to them too after a loss like that to be able to kind of answer questions, talk about your feelings, talk about what happened on the court too. So um, props to them for that and kind of I mean there was a caravan of Nebraska media there too. So. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate the effort that they did and just kind of be the consideration and thoughtfulness to help us do our job. They were able to talk about, but like you said, it was a lot of raw emotion. You saw Harper Murray kind of, she was very blunt and truthful and Becca Alec just, she wears her emotions on her sleeve. That's who she is. So I think I, I appreciate that because like we were talking, that leads to a lot better quotes and thoughts. It's not just kind of, we played hard. Oh. Texas was just the better team and we'll come back next year and, yeah. Okay. Anybody could say that. You could predict some of those quotes too, but they gave what they were thinking and were honest about it. And I appreciate that too. It wasn't coming from a place of putting Texas down. It was coming from a place of they were motivated. They were hurt. This is what they were yeah. feeling in the moment too. So I don't think they had said anything that they should be ashamed of, or they hopefully, no. I hope they don't regret because I think it was honest. It was their truth and it was what they were feeling at the moment. Yeah. I, I mean, Beck Alec gained a new fan and me watched that. I'm like, I can pull for her when she made the quote about this is what you get. This is what you get for Karen. And how many yeah, of us, everybody of Karen, yeah. has felt, yeah, this is the price you date for Karen. I mean, man, is that hit home as an athlete, as a person who's, you just, you totally felt where she was at. Yeah. I mean, and, and a fan too. I mean, there were a lot of fans that were disappointed down there too, but I mean, to show that she kind of, I don't know, she was on the same wavelength as they were. It wasn't just another match. Like, yeah, we'll have an, I'm a sophomore. I'll have a couple of the chance though. She was hurting from that. So I, I mean, I, it was just a great quote. And she even said, I think the next sentence after that was, if I had to do this all over again, with the same exact result, I would, because I enjoyed my teammates so much. I enjoyed the experience so much that yes, it ended on a sour note, but the journey was so worth it. And I think that's maybe Hopefully what Nebraska fans do appreciate and college volleyball world appreciates is the journey that the Nebraska team went on. And yet their season was not a failure because they did not win no. a national championship. They had so much to be proud of and so much development and just accomplishments throughout the year that it was a great season for them. Well, think about what everybody was saying in August. This is the building year. This is the rebuilding. No seniors yeah. for Nebraska. <laughs> and the way they walked through the year. Yeah. Yeah. It's disappointing. You know what it reminded me of and age us a little bit, but do you remember when the fab five got beat their freshman year and Mm. Chris Weber, it, 
-hmm. like their interview after the national championship. Well, that was the second year. That one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the second year. Okay. No timeout. Okay. Yeah. 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 The first year where they were like, oh, freshmen, we go. That's what everybody expected them. And to, for them to come in and they took a lot of backlash from that, from outsiders, how they acted. But to me, it was the same. This is exactly how we feel. I came here to win multiple championships. I am hurt. I am angry. I'll be in the gym tomorrow. Yeah. Well, and also too, it, 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 nothing is guaranteed. I mean, yes, Nebraska has no seniors, but we've already seen a little bit of roster change. It'll be a different team next year coming back. Yes. Most of them will be on this team and they're not guaranteed to make another national championship match. So you want to win that while you're there, while you have the opportunity. So I think that's what also makes it hurt a little bit more too. Cause I think, and Becca talked about this in the, the days leading up to this, that nothing is guaranteed. You got to earn it. So just because you made a national championship this year doesn't mean that you're it's a Nebraska's birthright to make it next year. They have to earn, go back and earn it, put in their work too. Uh, do they have a chance? Yeah, it's a very good chance because of their skill level and their work ethic. But this was a chance that they let slip through. And I think that's also what made it hurt a little bit more too is they didn't seize the opportunity when it was in front of them. Yeah, I mean, Becca absolutely nailed it. It hurts when you invest so much and you care so much and you get so close. My only thought is I know how hard they work anyways. I hope that they give themselves a little bit of peace and don't just, mm -hmm. you know, absolutely kill themselves in the gym waiting for that one. They will work hard. They are talented. I mean, they set volleyball history. Look at those things and... I, I hope they can do that as competitors because next December is a long way away and yeah. they got to, they got to give themselves some grace and some rest as well. So I hope they're not quite in the gym yet. They heal up and, and get it. But it, it was as we, everybody talks about, okay, the growth of volleyball and we still don't get this from ESPN. Well, listen, ESPN wants great storylines. You want great storylines. I want storylines coming in and giving pat answers don't make for great storylines that yeah. is part of the growth like or dislike it gives you a reason to watch those players next year because you remember what she said in the press conference remember what john cook said etc yeah i mean it gives both board material for everyone but if you need stuff on a bulletin board to motivate you yeah uh, you, you... You got to look internal a little bit after that too from an athlete standpoint i completely agree i'm just talking about the general fan yeah. who needs a reason to maybe tune in as you try and grow. You know, we, we talked to, I brought up that Michigan team, right? Back then you were Michigan or you were Duke. You loved them or you didn't like them, but guess what? Even if you didn't like them, you tuned into games to cheer against them. And that's what grows the sport. I think is rivalries. And that's what you see too. I mean, a lot of the, look at the top teams in the sport too, you look at Wisconsin, you look at Texas, Nebraska. I mean, there's a lot of fans that enjoy watching them. But there's probably also a lot of people who enjoy hate watching them too and want to see them lose, want to see them go down. So eh, a viewer is a viewer. I don't care what your motivation is, but if you can get behind the storyline and get behind the programs too, and it, it, it all helps grow the sport too. And if people get to the point where they watch stuff out of hate watching, great. The, the sports made it, made it to that level too. So we'll take you. Yeah. And, and people need to understand with the growth, right? It's not going to be. And I think sometimes they think, okay, well, it's just this nice young female athlete. We want her to be all, you know, bubbly and joyous and give us a great, you know, a couple of quotes and in interview. No, they're athletes, right? And athletes care yeah. and athletes hurt and they get excited and they might trash talk a little bit. And, you know, so does the middle linebacker you, Alabama. Get, get a yellow card for yeah. trash talking across the net too. Great. Right, Bring, right. Build well, that rivalry. I mean, not that I think it should become like a UFC fight and with their own no. punches, but I mean, you're on the biggest stage, the, all the hours and the excitement that they put in, that, that just comes out and that's athletics. I don't think, yeah. I mean, heck, when we're going to go and compete in Anaheim together this weekend at the, you know, 1920 NTDP, it's not like they need each other. It's just, that's, I mean, that's sports. So they're, yeah, they're, uh, that's a whole, they're competitors, that's a yeah. whole other podcast, red cards and yellow cards. But <laughs> I do want to get into, as we've talked about. And I tweeted the other night that the reason, you know, you look at college football and you look at college basketball over the years, great rivalries are what make the sport. Um, ABC talked about back in the day, the huge boost 
during the Miami Florida State rivalry way back, how it boosted their ratings and really set them to where they are today. Texas Nebraska volleyball. It yeah. is a full fledged rivalry. If it wasn't before, it sure is now. Yeah, for sure. And you need more of those too. I mean, the last couple of years, there's been a lot of Nebraska, Wisconsin, I think, and they drive the Big mm -hmm. Ten too. But what makes the Nebraska, Texas one a little more is the familiar faces that have been on both sides of it too. I mean, you had Lexi's son went from Texas to Nebraska. Kayla Caffey, Kayla Akana also went there. And now you have Whitney Lonstein, who is going to be a Longhorn too. And Jordan Larson was also on the coaching staff for a few months before she left and then eventually joined Nebraska as a, a coaching staff too. And Eric Sullivan, who's been, I mean, he's been with Eric, he's been with Jarrett Elliott for 13 years now too, but he learned under Coach Cook for three years before he kind of moved on too. So there's a lot of familiar faces. I'll even say I'm on this side too, because I used to work at the University of Texas in their compliance office for a couple of years too, about a decade ago too. So I've been on both sides of this too. So there's just a lot of familiar faces that go back and forth. Well, and then even you go to this year, I followed it and then not had anything to do, but look at the 25 class with, you know, eight names. Eight names, yeah. And and I know I mean, Ellis Wendell was also looked at Nebraska very closely and Nebraska yeah. came down to looking at either Bergen Riley or Ellis Wendell. So yeah. they're very familiar with their two. So yeah, there's this lot of, lot of, it's a small world of volleyball at that elite level as well too. And I think, that, I mean, and also Nebraska and Texas played in regional finals in the pandemic season in 20, spring 2021, and they played again in December of 21, and Nebraska beat Texas on their home court in the regional final. So they're just, they tend to meet a lot too. And this was the third time they've played for a national title as well too this year. So just a lot of history, a lot of motivating factors. And I think a little bit of it spills over from other sports too. There's some football animosity at the base layer of, the, of that as well too. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, way, way back in the big eight, the, the, the old school, the old school days of college football. But and you look at two iconic coaches who, you know, both are proud and, and I think they, they do things their own way, but they're, you know, two of the elite in the sport and, you know, they're, they compete as well. And it's always going to come down to those two, at least for the near future and the way things are economically and whatnot with college volleyball, it's going to come down to those two programs for a lot of the elite talent and transfers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're competing for the same athlete. They're going after the same transfers. There's just a lot of competition to get the same, those elite players on their roster too. Cause it's all, again, at the end of the day, it's about talent acquisition and coaching them up too. And Jared Elliott and John Cook are two of the best in the college game too. And they want what's best for their program and they're going to try to find every advantage they can over uh, other teams. It, it makes for good TV though. And it definitely makes for good press conferences, which <laughs> we're all about. I, yeah. I mean, I love the drama, bring on the drama. Yeah. Which after, I mean, Texas, Nebraska went first and then Texas went and another reporter asked, asked Ellis Wendell about Harper Murray's comment. They're going to win the next three. And Jared Elliott stepped in and said, no comment. They have no thoughts right. on that too. So again, makes for more entertaining press conferences. Well, and they talk, I, I didn't get all of Coach Cook's comment on, you know, it, you know, the whole transfer, building the roster, and then Texas fans firing back, you know, Lexi's son says hi, and it was like, hey, you add, you had transfers, but they both, I mean, it's part of the game now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did this kind of deep dive yesterday for a volleyball Mac and looking at Nebraska's had a transfer on their roster for the last 20 years. There's been at least one. But the, the person that Nebraska take is more kind of as a gap filler or something that didn't happen. They're not actively. I mean, I think they've never had more than two transfers on the same roster at once. And then Texas takes a different approach. They just want talent. They want to build a team. Five of the 10 players who played all three sets were transfers. So it's just different approaches. There's nothing wrong with it. And there's no one way is better than the other. It's just we'll see. Maybe you get a great nucleus that can play together for a couple of years. Or maybe you just get talent that can't be matched. and you get a Mass and Skinner who is by far the best player on the court too. It, it doesn't matter most of the time who, who you put up against her. Yeah, wrap up a little bit, but what do you see for this? I, I just want to talk about the drive of this freshman so sophomore class because I think they, they set the bar extremely high. You know, other prospects are looking. It's not, it is definitely not easy just to jump in as an 18-year-old and play at that level, especially at Nebraska, but 
you are around them day in, day out. Talk about the drive and the competitive competitiveness of the special class. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think I mentioned it before too, but they came in day one, they changed the gym in Nebraska too. And it really made everyone kind of realize, oh, I'm just because I'm a sophomore or junior now doesn't mean that I'm guaranteed playing time. So the freshmen really changed uh, the dynamics of the gym too. And uh, you saw a lot of them prove that they're worthy. They earned playing time on the court over maybe some upperclassmen. So I, and I think that's not going to change too. You heard from Harper Murray saying that she's going to come in, work harder. And I think Harper Murray is, I mean, we, she was a third team All-American too, but there's still a lot that she can do to grow her game and kind of really take a step forward too. So I'm excited to see what she can do. Andy Jackson has still, I mean, still a little bit raw on some things. So there, there's just a lot that they can do. And, but it comes down to, they want to, they enjoy the sport of volleyball. They enjoy practice just as much as they do being out in a match on the stage performing. So I think that's the key difference to to this class where Nebraska has the soon to be sophomores of what they kind of, their approach is they're willing to put in the effort, willing to put in the grind. I, I remember even watching before Harper Murray arrived in Nebraska, she would just, on social media, she would put out her workout videos too. And, oh, I got tired just watching them, just the, the effort that she would put into her training, not just her physical training, not just her volleyball training, but just kind of building up strength and stamina. stamina. So it, it's really impressive what they can do. And, and Bergen Riley too is just putting in reps and playing with the senior national team too. She's finding ways to refine her craft too. And Lainey Troboy will do anything to get that extra little bit of edge too. So again, it's it's the entire class uh, of all of them that really kind of push everyone in the gym, but they enjoy the process. They enjoy being in the gym, putting in the effort and finding ways that they can improve themselves. So before we go, what, so what's on tap for you now? What does it look like? Because volleyball is kind of a year round job. What, what does your schedule look like now that the college season is over? It it does take a it t- it take a step back a little bit too, and kind of like Nebraska players, they don't start classes until the end of January. Things will get a little bit a little slow here too. But living in Nebraska, the next big thing is the uh, professional volleyball federation, the Omaha Supernovas, yeah. start in late January. So I'm probably going to be around that. See how that team they play. Their season starts in late January and goes through May. So I'll kind of watch that and be there a little bit to cover that. But beach season then starts in February for Nebraska. So they are one of the anomalies within beach where the, all the indoor players also play beach. So following that and kind of making their spring break trip to Hawaii, California. And then the mystery is then too, is what, what smaller Nebraska city will get to host their spring exhibition match. It's a cool thing where they kind of take Damn. Nebraska volleyball out into the state and sell out whatever high school or community college or state college gym to take the game to the people. That's awesome. Well, I have two goals. My goal, you talk about fandom. I have to talk to Jalen or Kelly or somebody. My professional goal is I want to be able to sit and watch Dream Team Camp. I, Mm. to me, that's my fandom. I can't imagine. Oh, all right. I'm there. I'm there. I ask all the kids to get invited. I'm like, what's that like? But just the environment of that and for kids that age to do it. But I will, there's some good volleyball in the Kansas City, Omaha area club wise. I'll give you a shout and you can come join Jalen and start watching those 14, 15 year olds. It'll be, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know if I want to get that. It'll be that Huskers if we're still that. around, if we're still around, but Hey, yeah. I, thank you for your time. Your work is, mer- uh, tell everybody about your podcast. that has been number one in the volleyball industry pretty much all fall. Yeah. It's a little pro- side project that myself and Jeff Sheldon, who also covered Nebraska volleyball kind of, I took over his beat at the Omaha World Herald a couple years ago too, but we go way back. But we have a podcast, Volleyball State. We do it weekly during the season, sometimes more than weekly, but that's also going to take a little bit of step back. But we cover everything. I think we have the tagline. It's all about volleyball, mostly college volleyball, mostly Nebraska too. But we do kind of cover the national scene. We cover some international stuff too. So uh, Volleyball State is what it's what it's called. You can find it anywhere uh, that podcasts are released too. And I occasionally write for Volleyball Mag. I vote on their all American teams, which should be coming out here. Uh, it came out in late December and I vote in their weekly poll too. So I think the cool thing too, is the media poll that they kind of organized. So I, I, I like to have my hand on lots of things. It's a fun sport to cover and it never ends. So there's always projects and opportunities to kind of help write about and grow the sport. So I appreciate what you're doing too, Darren. 
with all of Thanks, that uh, volleyball adrenaline and uh, covering the recruiting process as well, too. Yeah, it's cool to get to meet these kids. And I am late to the game, but I have learned a lot from people like yourself. Check out Lincoln's content on Twitter is where I see most of it. But he yes. is, it is always my goal Link? to break news before you do, which I never do. Oh. But <laughs> I think if I yeah. can break something but, before Lincoln, that I'm doing well. But oh, you're good. on top of the banner. <laughs> Thank you for your time, and we will definitely take you up on that dream team this summer. But we'll keep following your stuff. And everybody, again, on on Twitter, check out their podcast. But Lincoln Arneal, yes. he is the beat of the Huskers and big, really Big Ten Volleyball. But I'm going to thank him for his time. Everybody, I thank you for tuning in again to the VB Adrenaline podcast. If you want to check us out. Go to uh, Instagram. Our Insta is at vbadrenaline.com underscore and on the X at vbadrenaline. Chime in. Tell us what you think. Uh, give us what you want to hear and help us keep growing in this little project that we've taken on. And we're loving every minute of it. So until next time, everybody, thank you. And thanks to Lincoln for his time. Take care.